learning mathematical logic is actually not that bad. It's something that really anyone can jump into. Even if you don't know a lot of mathematics, this is something that you can actually pick up and start learning. And it's something I don't really talk about much, so I decided to make this video just to show you one option for a book that you can use to learn mathematical logic. Now, having said that, most people study some logic when they take either um, discrete mathematics in college or a proof writing class if you're a math major. And in both of those courses, you'll learn some logic, but then you'll jump into, you know, like the paragraph style proofs, which is very, very important, right? If you are thinking about you know, pursuing a mathematics degree, or you just want to learn more mathematics for the sake of learning mathematics, and you want to learn to write proofs, then, um, you know, those books are probably a, a better choice. For example, the book by Velman uh, is a great book, and it's amazing, and I'll leave a link in the description to that book, and this one as well, in case you want a book on pure logic. Okay, so this is a pure logic book. It's just logic, and it's very thorough, right? It's very, very thorough. The book is called Elementary Symbolic Logic, and it's by Gustafsson and Ulrich. And I believe you can still find this. I will leave a link in the description in case you want to check it out. So you open up the book. Let's take a look at it. And it's got all the symbols and stuff that you need for logic. Elementary Symbolic Logic, William Gustafsson, Dolph E. Ulrich, Purdue University, Waveland Press, um, they have some really good books that they have uh, published. And here's the copyright. 89 is this edition and 73 is the original one. Yeah. I'm a big fan of their books. A lot of the books from the 80s uh, by Waveland Press, um, they have different designs. This one, this one has an okay cover design. I like some of the other ones better. And here it kind of indicates how basically um, what I just said that you can just pick this up and start with this. Let's read this together. This textbook is designed for a one semester or two quarter introductory course in symbolic logic. No previous training is presupposed, right? So you could pick up a book on logic, it doesn't have to be this one, any book, and you could start learning. And a deliberate attempt has been made to appeal to students from a wide range of disciplines who enroll in such a course with varying motives and expectations. For the benefit of students with non-technical backgrounds, relatively intricate topics, especially those pertaining to quantification, are discussed more extensively than is usual. So he goes on and you know talks about the content of the book, what's in the book, you know the motivation, all that stuff. So writing a book is a monumental task. I think a lot of people don't realize how hard it is. I started to write a book and I, I'm not done. It's just so hard. It takes so much work. I have so much respect for anyone who writes a book, even if it's not a good book. It's just it's just so much work. So here's the contents. Let's take a careful look at this. So chapter one is an introduction. This is really important stuff that, you know, you should definitely want to learn and understand if you want to get to the point where you can write proofs and understand them. So arguments and or and not. And then centennial, sentential logic, semantic methods. I hope I said that correctly. Truth tables, deductive methods, and then some comparisons, quantificational logic. I studied logic. I took a course where um, I studied logic for most of the course, and then I did some proof writing. And at the same time, I took a discrete math course, which also involved proof writing. So it made my proof writing very, very strong early on. And I think that really, really helped me. And it's probably one of the few reasons um, that I did well. Quantificational logic, and then there's some more logic there. And it has some induction. It talks about truth trees, normal forms and circuits. And it has answers to selected exercises. Let's jump to that. Let's jump to the back of the book. So you see here the answers that it does have. It doesn't have all the answers, but the answers it does have are fairly thorough, right? So you're going to get pretty good feedback for some of the exercises. And, you know, it's not perfect. It doesn't have all the answers, unfortunately. Very few books do. There are some that do, but very few do. So, yeah, it's better than nothing. That's what I always think. Let's look at the beginning so you see how it starts. So it's it's a very readable text. I mean, it's pretty good. Here we go. Let's take a look at this. So you see what to expect in this book. So chapter one, introduction. Like most disciplines, logic treats so wide a range of problems and topics that any attempt to describe its subject matter briefly is bound to be misleading and incomplete. Right, so that's why this person, uh, this author, these authors wrote this book because most books on proof writing, they have some logic, but they don't go as in-depth as this one. 
But its most elementary and fundamental concern is with matters relevant to the study of arguments, the primary topic of this book. For our purposes, an argument may be characterized as a sequence of sentences of which one, the conclusion of the argument, is marked off as following from the others, which are the premises of the argument. Our main job will be to develop some tools and techniques useful in determining whether or not certain sentences follow from certain others and in explaining why they do or do not. Let's look at some truth tables. So here we have truth tables for and, or, and not. So how this works is you have a column for P, a column for Q, and then a column for P and Q. And then here it tells you here P and Q is true, false, false, false. So a statement like P and Q is only going to be true when they're both true. As you can see here from the truth table, in the first row, we have P is true, Q is true, and so when they're both true, that's when P and Q is true. And then the second row says P is true and Q is false, well, it's gonna be false. Third row, P is false, Q is true, well, it's false. And then the last row, if they're both false, it's false. So an and statement like you know P and Q is only going to be true when they're both true. And that's like super important in mathematics. That's like critical for understanding that. An or statement is going to be true when at least one of them is true. And that's evidenced here again by this truth table. You see here in the first row, when they're both true, it's true. In the second row, only P is true and it's true. In the third row, only Q is true and it's true. But when they're both false, that's when it's false. So and statements are true when they're both true. And then or statements will be a true when at least one of them is true. And then here's the negation. So if P is true, then not P is false. If P is false, then not P is true. So things that you see in um, most logic books and things that are important. And I just wanted to show you this book because I know a lot of people have been requesting a book on logic. I don't think I have many videos on um, on books on logic. I have I have probably, well, I have quite a few books on logic, but I have more books on proof writing. And that's simply because there exists more books on proof writing, right? There's less books on logic in existence than there are proof writing because I feel that a book on proof writing is more beneficial to most people. So I'm not saying you shouldn't get this book. You know, if you want a book on logic, you should get it. But I, I do think most people would benefit more uh, from a book on proof writing because it has logic in it, right? It might not go as, you know, I mean, look at this, right? Look at this stuff. It's not gonna go as in depth as this, okay? It's not gonna like, you know, be this hardcore, but it's gonna jump to, um, you know, paragraph style proofs, which is how you, you know, write actual mathematical proofs. And again, I think the book by um, Velman is a really good choice. Um, another book that is really good for proof writing that, you know, can help you is the book by Hammock and it's free. It's called Book of Proof. You can just go on Google, type in Book of Proof and there's this wonderful, wonderful free book that you can download 100% for free. You know, Hammock has made it free for the entire world and, and you can learn um, to write proofs with that book. I actually made a video on that book um, a long time ago and... It's a great book. In fact, even though the book is free, I liked it so much that I um, I decided to buy it. So I actually own the book by Hammock, even though it's free. I went on Amazon and like decided to buy it because it's such a great book. But this is a book on logic, and I just want to show it to you here in this video. Again, it's called Elementary Symbolic Logic by Gustafsson, Gustafsson and Ulrich. And I did check before making this video. I usually don't check, but I checked, and it is available. Like You can still find it. Um, I don't recall uh, the price. This one is a hardcover. And this one I, is probably the second edition, right? Because, yeah, 1973, 1989. Wow, and it's in pretty good condition for, for, for such an old book. So just a, a nice book on logic that um, you can use to learn. So there it is, a book on mathematical logic. So hopefully this video has been helpful to someone out there in the world who is looking for some help. If you are not a subscriber on this channel, uh, consider subscribing, hitting subscribe if you want. I post all kinds of content, uh, mostly math, you know, book reviews, all kinds of stuff. Also, um, if you use Instagram, follow me on Instagram. It's uh, uh, the real math sorcerer on Instagram. I've been posting there uh, some random stuff as well. Anyways, until next time, good luck, take care. And if you're struggling with math, just know it's normal, right? It's normal for everyone. Everyone struggles. Keep struggling. Keep, keep, keep working hard. Good luck.